Let's rock and roll, boys. Hi there, and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I am your host today, Matt, and I'm here with Austin Cummings. Hey, Matt. Hi, Austin. Oh, oh. oh. hey, buddy. Oh, hi. Um, so, we, it's just us two, have both been playing on our brand new Switch lights, one in banana yellow and another in soul-crushing mm-hmm. charcoal. We'll let you decide which is which. <laughs> and... Um, We've got thoughts, and we know that, you know, neither of us can uh, really um, explain why we bought these in a, in a way that makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. Um, neither of us can really... No, I feel like that's kind of a big picture, that style of question for like a lot of my hobbies, interests, or like lack of other pursuits, or <laughs> lack of more meaningful interests, are like, I can't explain it, but here I am. And but... here you are, listener, and we want to talk about... The latest toy we bought, which is the Switch Lite. So a few weeks ago, Matt and I did an unboxing and even before then talked about our impressions leading up to the release. Right. We've now had the opportunity to play with it for a couple weeks. And so we just kind of want to do a little check in. So now I'm going to ask you just off the top of your head. If you had to go out and buy just one Switch right now, which of the two would it be? Traditional Switch or Switch Lite? Right now? Me? If you had to and you were a new Switch owner. A uh, new Switch for owner. For you personally, uh, okay. what would you do? Okay. Uh... If I was a new Switch owner, for me personally, I still would go and grab the the official Switch. I mean, if you're asking me personally. I would too. If I'm going to suggest anything to anyone else who has, hasn't gotten a Switch thus far, um, and I have been doing this, I, I've been recommending the Switch Lite, especially because I work mm. with a lot of students who don't have, you know, like either full-time jobs or they don't have big hands or they've only ever really been a Nintendo handheld player. Um, who loves Pokemon and other small games, and this is like the perfect thing for them. Um, and that's what I've been doing a lot of. But but I've also been like, oh, I want you to get a Switch, and hey, there's a cheaper one. Like I'm just trying to get yeah, people into. I have the kind ecosystem. of done that too. I I would get the original Switch. I would probably still recommend for most people the original Switch. I do feel like though, people are moving away. I, I wonder, Matt, for how many of the students that you work with, how many people? Do you observe that like bring TVs or have TVs? Uh, to everyone, pretty much everybody. Everyone's everyone got a TV or a monitor, or something that they could hook up to this. But is that ideal? I mean, in college setting, yeah, you're gonna you want to play Smash Brothers and Mario Karts. Um, you want to hook it up, and all the all the halls have a lounge with a giant TV that you can hook up things up into. Like having someone on your floor or in your room. Or you to have that like it's just the the a hundred dollars the value that adds. In terms of screen real estate, battery life now, if you're getting the new Switch, and um, just docking ability and the Joy-Con feature. I mean, that's like all that is what a Switch is. It's meant, that's what it's meant to be. You're getting the best of both worlds, really. They're getting the modular portion and the and the, the TV part. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's in terms of what I would recommend, you recommend. It's like, yeah, you should definitely get that. But that's the kind of players we are. Whereas, you know, the student I work with who loves Animal Crossing and Pokemon, um, you know, and makes minimum wage, like, this is exciting for her because that's all she wants. Yeah, I think when wants. I think of those cases, my sister, yeah. who lives in, you know, a room, does she have TV even? No, I think that's going to be more common. I, like, I've been playing some of my other consoles recently, and I will say that, like, some part of me, every time I go to turn on a TV or use a remote, and maybe this is a fleeting feeling, but it feels old. Like there is our phones, you know, both you and I, Matt also upgraded yeah, our iPhones recently. Like, and we're thinking about different tablets and things like that. Like I use my phone and my tablet far more than I use a TV or a laptop. And I start to wonder like, is, is playing things this way? Like, a, it's just not very attractive to me. Like, right. or in terms of like, I am not that interested in upgrading my TV, right. like, or making that purchase or upgrade and like the whereas upgrading my phone each year even is exciting and in a way that like going and buying the latest samsung tv or lg tv is not and right. so i i wonder if there's gonna be more people where this will appeal um but i still would recommend the original let's kind of get in into it 
Um, yeah, so, so if you actually off, watched our un, our unboxing video, all right, I just wanted to say that like if you, I had a very genuine reaction to holding it for the first time. I was mm -hmm. super thrilled with the with Lucky one how light it was, the kind of the kind of the matte finish of the device, how solid mm -hmm. it felt, um, and ultimately just kind of being a kid again and having like uh like the ultimate Game Boy, like in my mm -hmm. hands and. It just it feels more ergonomic than the current it switch. Does. And so yeah, let's yeah break through some down. Let's talk over the the positives. Sure. Ergonomics. I think we both feel like it's more comfortable. Yeah. The I like it too. It feels sturdy. I think the elements that don't feel as sturdy are like the speakers. That's a negative. Yeah. But yeah, not a huge deal. I also do use headphones a lot when I care about the music. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I just keep it on, and I I'm not too worried about the audio quality. Uh, yeah. But I always almost always use sound uh the and i will say that i do notice the system getting warm a little more quickly mm -hmm. i wouldn't say it gets hot but i um it's a smaller device i feel the battery and the warmth yeah what i uh the buttons feel good i love the the back buttons the zl and zr yes. they're so clicky yes i really like that yes i wish the other buttons have a lot of action to them like the front facing buttons there's a lot of like you can depress each button pretty uh, far. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I honestly the, the buttons prefer, are great. I also like the uh, the yeah. look of the buttons specifically. I like, I like the, 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 the white uh, everywhere it looks really nice on, yeah, on, all, like how, on all the colors. Yeah. I also like that the underside of the joystick is black, and I think that is a nice look too. Of Ooh, the I, I, I actually didn't realize that on yeah, it's, my it gives console. it like a cool depth look to it. And, oh, I can um, see it on yours. Yeah, that is nice. And I will also say that I like the look of the bezel much more on the screen. Mm -hmm. it, it's less of an obvious transition. Yes. Yeah. So I like that. The I like the buttons on the front, although I will say I like the really clickiness of the standard Joy-Con, honestly. Mm -hmm. I like the D-pad, obviously, more than this. I might actually prefer the regular Joy-Con buttons. These are mm -hmm. still good and clicky, but um, they move further. It's a more immediate quick tap on uh, the traditional the, yeah. Switch Joy-Con. I probably preference the original Switch Joy-Con, honestly, in that way. But I do think it's, uh, it is more comfortable. And I think actually a lot of games, they, so both screens output at a max resolution of 720p, but because the screen on the Switch Lite is smaller, yeah, the, the size pixel is, is higher. It's just, and so it looks very crisp. I actually think it looks much crisper in Fire Emblem particularly, which, ha which is mm -hmm. a game that has very bland environments. I think the characters looks much better, pop yeah. a lot better. Yeah. Um, in like a meaningful way. So those are some of the positives with just some negatives. I just rolled on in there. What are any other like big positives you want to talk about? Yeah. So, I mean, I would say the biggest positive for me is just the, this sounds trivial, but the portability is, is really nice. Like, yeah, for sure. Like I traveled over the weekend to go see my brother and it was, I, I took a tiny, I took a, a little duffel bag, but then I got a tiny backpack. And mm -hmm. typically, I can't no smaller fit smaller than a than a babe. It's really. like a it's like a it's like a and small a day pack, right? <laughs> Just not like yeah, any you big, can barely fit a little baby. Than a sweet child. <laughs> and uh, we, you know, I put I put my uh, wireless headphones in there. I put uh, my laptop because I was doing some work, and the laptop barely fits. But it was just so nice to just kind of just slide this thing in. It's a noticeable difference. It. Like yeah. you're never gonna put the switch in your pocket, no matter what model you mm -hmm. have. But like. I have a backpack every day at work. I have to carry around a certain product uh, for my job. And I sometimes put my original Switch in the bag. And this is much lighter, frankly. I don't notice the lack of rumble, real, honestly. No. I never felt like HD rumble was that impressive. Um, and In terms of like a differentiating factor, it was just, I felt, for the most part, yeah. standard rumble. I don't notice the lack of any rumble uh, on this. The It feels like you said, Matt, like a Game Boy. But having it smaller... And I, f it's way easier for me to throw into a bag, and um, I don't notice the size is taking up. And I also feel like um, it, for whatever reason, just the build quality, it feels sturdier. Like I, I treat it as something that can be a little more roughed up. It doesn't have to be babied around, yeah. maybe as much yeah. as the other one. Um, is my feeling. I and, mean, the, um, the, the jo and I think Nintendo. This just to me shows that Nintendo has thought intentionally about the design of what a solid switch would look like and you know iterated a little bit on the the comfort of holding this device and yeah. 
to, to me, it shows me that whatever future Switch is, they're thinking about all those things. Like, how do we make sure that the Joy-Con of the future are... Because I, yeah. I really still think that that's, a, that's still a pivotal thing. To be able to pop those things off and play multiplayer is still right. great. But how do you make them tighter and, uh, you know, uh, just yeah. less wobbly? How do you make the buttons better? Um, but ultimately, I think yeah. they're just slates yeah. right now. So how do you make them more ergonomic at the same time? And that's what this switch offers so much so that like I am opting to just lay on my couch and play this or in bed yeah. way more than grabbing the other switch. And I and you and I both have the newer switch with the better battery right. life. So that is something I want to talk about though, is that okay. so the one last thing on the ergonomics though, it does remind me of, I believe, hopefully not hypocritical, but back for the Wii U. When they designed that tablet, yeah. they did it like kind of out of clay type thing. That's how they make a lot of their multis. Like because Nintendo, famously also for Super Mario sixty four, like they Miyamoto went. It was just again, and again, and again the feel of Mario before they did any type of design. Just what is it like to see him jump? What's it like yeah. to move him in a circle? Like it was just nailing the feel. Same thing. And I their handhelds are almost always really comfortable. Like yeah, and I the original Switch is comfortable. This is better. Like I think I like the feel of the Joy Cons. No, the yeah. normal ones oh yeah they feel they, they're weird and curved they feel like something that was really handcrafted it's not like yeah um and they're, and they're just not like it feels like it was very personal they're solid this, pieces of tech too they don't feel yeah. you know they're not hollow things and that, and this is a, like you said matt it's a step in the forward even it is exciting to see what else they might consider doing especially when you consider okay they are hiding the bezels a little bit maybe the signals to us they are aware that was a visual, you know, a design criticism that we'll see totally removed or much more so removed in the next iteration. The, um, but let's talk about, like you mentioned, the battery life is the biggest thing that I yeah. notice a difference on. So much so now that I've used the updated standard switch model um, enough in the past month and a half, two months, that I this one feels very comparable to the original switch. I don't even notice mm -hmm. any real difference. Yeah. I do notice it dying much faster. Like I'm, um, and it's not you know, because you're very, just playing it more. It's just, it's uh, not because I'm playing it yeah. more. I played the other, my other switch a ton. Um, I just noticed the difference. I haven't had an issue. I've had to, I haven't had to, I haven't been using my external battery pack. I you know have it if I need it. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I've had, um, any trip scenario recently where I'm like, Oh, I gotta like put it away. Cause I need to save the battery. So it's not that dramatic. Um, but it's enough that like when I finish playing the updated switch and I check the home menu, just pop back in, maybe cruise around the eShop or see what I like the, I'm like, wow, better life is like pretty good. Yeah. This, I hit the home button and I'm like, yeah, I'm at, you know, 40% yeah. or 30%. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to remember tonight to charge it. Yeah. Um, especially because I want it in my bag. So it's not spending as much charger time probably, yeah. but I'm fully charging it every night. And, um, you know, it's worse. The battery life's worse. I wish it were comparable to the new switch because, um, this is more like the original and playing three hours of breath of the wild kind of blows without like the ability to yeah. better connect. I remember, I remember doing that on the, you know, on the switch two years ago, playing breath of the wild in bed and being like, crap, thank God. I like, I bought extra USB C cables, you know, right. and have them all over the yeah, place. I'm, but my, they've, they, I'm, my, I can't, you know, turn around without running into a few USB C chargers now. But the, so it's, it's really just a comparison. No, oh, yeah, and, and it, it's, it's a, significant size. The size of the battery, it's, it's still impressive given that it is a physically smaller battery that can mm -hmm. still keep the charge for for that long. Yeah. Um, it's but the it, it, switch that yep. uh, chipset that the updated switch has too. Smaller battery, like you said, Matt, that gives us all the other bonuses we talked about. So, of course, it's a trade off. It does make but, you think, are, will they continue to do that with Switch? Uh, will they make the, these under the radar updates? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we get a Switch Lite a year from now that's got a slightly better chip, which comes with better battery life. And then, like, and okay, the thing, question for yeah, you. Are you, yeah. would, and you, uh, you've done this already, but would you, if this got a 20 to 30% battery XL life? in 2019. Yes. <laughs> 30 percent more battery uh released completely without fanfare of the switch light new new skew of it but maybe a different box but it's the same device do you buy it in the future M more red box if it were a year from now future yeah um yeah i would okay and then so sell this one to 
just just yeah. for the extra battery life. I would like you know it worked out well with the GameStop trade in yeah. with thing you know I talked about maybe off air, but we each paid no, uh, not I paid seventy dollars to upgrade the Switch and it yeah. felt very worth it and I would definitely do it again and um the price point's already lower for this and if it were something similar again I would yeah. I wouldn't if they updated it in the next couple months I would not but if I were a year out and I was still using the Switch Lite primarily um i would i think it's enough of a significant difference that it's definitely worth the upgrade price. yeah and that's how i feel right now between the updated switch versus switch Lite, it is enough of a difference that it is worth the you do you know when you look at the straight switch Lite is a very good option for a subset of gamers you do get i think a hundred dollars worth of value in doing the full one if you're willing to spend 299 pre-tax like yeah between the dock joy con the features of the joy con and the battery you're easily getting a hundred dollars of value so i that is like my hesitation really on recommended light as much as i like it but i do find it more comfortable i love the game boy feel of it i enjoy picking up and playing it my yeah. final i go ahead no i mean i was just gonna say it's 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 really become my like indie machine um i got playing untitled goose game on this um I am playing Fire Emblem because I've always enjoyed Fire Emblem as a, a for sure. I play game, it on there too. Right? I think it's a great handling game. Like uh, I have Astral Chain. I'm waiting to finish that. I've Marvel Ultimate Alliance three that I'm very close to the end on. I'm waiting to finish that just back on the main Switch. But I play my I, like I've said it before. I play the Switch ninety five percent of the time handheld. Are you, are you so. playing Zelda on it, or are you doing Zelda? Yeah, on the TV? and it looks awesome. Okay, I'm playing it. I'm playing it right here. Okay, and it's um, and and here's the thing. It's actually also really easy to. Switch your data or just transfer your save data. It, I mean, is it is it the most ideal way? No, but it's it's way easier than I think a lot of people thought it was. It was way to easier be. than I feared. I still yeah. don't think it's as easy as it should be. Um, but I do agree that my fears were greater than how it turned out. We're both Matt and I come from owning multiple 3ds's. Mm-hmm. I had multiple th- new 3ds's that I switched between using uh, every few weeks for uh, I don't know a few months there, mm-hmm. and I. You know, you trade once and it's like, can't do it again for seven days. And I'm like, okay, I have a trip in this long. I want to use this one. Like, yeah. or, uh, it was so silly and slow, even on the new version. This is much better. I, I still, the caveats are everything should have cloud saves. It's crazy that it does not. And it's just not right. Like, yeah. Dark Souls on Switch should have cloud saves. You can download saves on PC. You can do it on PS4. Like, those games have cloud saves because every game on those platforms supports cloud saves. It's, and they're way larger platforms than the Switch. Like, it is bonkers. Yeah, it's very to me. weird. It's, very it's going weird. to be very stupid that Pokemon will not feature it or Animal Crossing. Also, those are games and that's that t- that's a totally are massive optional. time sinks. Yeah. So those are the games you want these things in, but they're so nervous about people finding exploits. Like, Nintendo, people will find exploits no matter what. So right. we should aim to make the experience as comfortable for yeah the don't don't sacrifice possible. that that uh creature comfort for so many more players um also for such a big game and a big franchise to right. you want to have that data in the cloud like god right like god forbid plus like, there are other ways of doing smart checks on it so like animal crossing yeah. the worry is okay i like use the i load up my old save as a way to like get around yeah. maybe a, maybe a mistake or, but there aren't even that many like mistakes you're not making across. But they're big. Maybe you use it to get around some type of time feature, right. such that you can r- exploit like a holiday event. But there are other ways they could do that to safeguard. Like, let's say if you change the clock and it notices in the game, you need to quickly like hop on the internet or something. Like, hey, if you change your clock on Animal Crossing, you need to confirm online once. Like something like right, that. Right. Exactly. Like, that would be like a quick check in that could get this, around you it. You need like, to establish an internet connection right. so that then. You know, the server un- understands, ah, it's like, not that time. In okay, like zone. maybe for Pokemon, the concern is like, hey, I do a trade with you. I give you my best shiny. Then I reload yeah, my cloud save from this and morning. And I have it again. And I have it again. But here's the other thing, Nintendo, which is that people are go- people already hack all of the games, as they know, of course, to like get shiny Pokemon. Like to use, the, you know, they're going to use their R4 chip or whatever to yeah. have the game in the first place. Like the... People are going to find exploits if that is so interesting to them or so exciting to them. Like, or here's another easy thing. How about you want to do um, a trade of that manner? Let's say you want to trade a shiny Pokemon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe a caveat is that you need to like save your game and upload it to the cloud before you complete the trade. Like they could do it like that. You know, it would force you to have interconnection at the point of trade. 
Yeah. You know, but that would be a workaround that would allow cloud saves to be like, hey, you need to update your, your save onto the cloud before you like before this trade finalizes. You do that. So that way, if you were reloaded, the trade had already finalized. Like yeah. that's a workaround. I'm sure there are other exploits, but there's always going to be exploits. It should be targeted towards the most comfort. And I do hate that. It should be easier. And I do think that is like a little bit of a. So why do you, you think know, that is? It's just like, yeah, or we could just not do cloud saves and not have to do any of that work. Yeah. I think it's just uh, development's easier if you just do X, you know, and, and yeah, it's even it more school. baffling for a game like Splatoon, which is basically an always online game. Yeah. Where it's like, I think their concern is that you would like rank down ranked or something and then load back. Yeah, but competitively, your progress should to... probably already be saved server side in a game like Splatoon. I'm sure your progress is not saved fully locally. Like, obviously. Player data is on there, your campaign progress and things. But I'm sure, without actually being sure, that much of the online has to be server based, such that that wouldn't even be possible. But I think they have just, they don't, I think it's more of a, we're not sure all the things people could do to exploit it. So it's just not allowing. Well, one of the ways people exploit it is through the, like, um, the little, the, I don't know, I forget what they're called. Like, but you earn, like, like seashells or some sort of like yes, from clam the, from or something, fest. right? Right. When you are, you can earn them. On, yes, you earn them in the splat fest. Uh, whether you win yeah, or lose, you, you win, you get a lot. Your gear, okay. you, and that's exactly right. Yeah, right. You yeah. roll for abilities, and a lot of people would exploit that to continue to get more of those, or so that they can re-roll using the same right. amount. Um, yeah. And that, but that plagued the first one, and I and might, might do it for the second one. But I remember the Wii was so bad. There was a definite exploit one that i eventually just used because i couldn't compete with people who had <laughs> this these amazing stats for all of their 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 clothing and yeah. items um the way to get around that would be because it's already an online game to say you need to update your cloud save right now if you want to cash in this item so yeah. then you save it the mm-hmm. cash in has taken place at the same time and so that way when you reload the save you've already made the transaction like that is the workaround or, yeah, not rocket make, science yeah like right after I, the transaction. How many saves. always online? Like I'm after this podcast, gonna go play some Destiny Two Shadow Keep. Like if I load my cloud save from last night, I'm not gonna like all of a sudden get my best, you know, things back or like you know uh, my kill death ratio is gonna be at like reset. Like it, no, it's not the that enough of that stuff is server side. It would not do anything if I were to reload that save. Right. Like it just saves. Player data, it just saves your and progress. Data yeah, and and minimal progress. But the, uh, even if I reloaded it, I would still have the same campaign progress. Like it's just yeah. like a base layer stuff because everything else is saved via Bungie, yeah. and it's, so it's, it's like it's weird. It's it's it, a silly the technology decision. definitely exists. It's even bonkers to talk about it as if like it's this like unsolvable problem. Like every other game has this. So I like want to harp on it because it is. Um, <laughs> bad and it does make the experience of of having two consoles like it adds a, a very stupid layer of complexity yeah. like i experienced and like okay for dragon quest 11 s it had a great demo on each you can still play it. now you can take your progress into the main game but you cannot take that demo stuff into the cloud so i didn't realize this and i was playing on my switch Lite, went to boot up the demo didn't have the save so I went to then go load my cloud save stuff from my original Switch into, into the cloud. I'm like, oh, weird, it's on the cloud. I can't do it. So I had to like bring the switches together, transfer that one save file over, delete it off, and then delete deleted it off my old Switch. It's just for like a single player demo. And it's yeah. like, <laughs> it's, you know. It's convoluted, yeah. And it's backwards for 2019. But here we are. At least we're talking about cloud saves and Nintendo in the same sense. <laughs> I know, this is always is the nice. thing. It's like, it's bad, but at least it's something so... We'll celebrate it. And the, the, it the, ain't right. <laughs> the, but the Switch Lite, though, has been such like a, I don't know, just like a, for me, it's just been like a, a childhood moment all over again. I just, I, you, you and I both talked about this. We love like Nintendo hardware. And this is just kind of like nice to see Nintendo taking all the best features of the Switch kind of making it a better form factor, giving people options. That's that's what I like to see companies do is just give give people options yeah. for different form factors of the product you're trying to sell and let the consumers decide ultimately. I appreciate that it's a definitively different product. Like yeah. it isn't a switch that just can't dock. Like it is it's a Game Boy. Like yeah. I I do appreciate that. Like 
you can't pop off the Joy-Con. No, it definitely isn't going to dock. Like, um, there's enough differentiating factors that it really is, like, what it is. And yeah. so you can make that decision which one is right for you. And it's not a matter of, like, when you look at even, um, you know, I feel like if you look at, like, the iPhone... I, I think uh, if you're trying to like upgrade iPhones or things like that, like there's a, there's a murkiness where it's like, do I really need 10 R up to the 11 or whatever? Mm-hmm. And it's like, um, there are incremental changes and things like that. But with the switches, it's like, if you want this experience, you do this. And if you want this experience, you do that. Yeah. And, um, you can choose for yourself and there's two different prices and they're both new. So, yeah. you know, I like those aspects uh, for sure. So go ahead. I, I just, I'm excited for all the people that are going to be, buying this console and, and joining the switch fam for uh in the foreseeable future with pokemon and animal crossing yeah. kind of in the, you know you know i would the love wing, to see them like... do is one i want that flip cover case that's coming to japan and apparently <laughs> also know. coming to australia and europe i know oh so, so i think there's i think there's hope that we'll get it i uh, think we'll get it because it's not uh, out yet there no and no. it comes out i think in november or something in like the eu it does look it does look very cool and it would just it would just it would make complete the, transferring or uh, transporting your your you know your switch around even sleeker and even slimmer because obviously I'm I'm holding up the I've got like Nintendo's very basic. Can I tell but, you like, like a Nintendo very sad story about mine? No, I, what happened? It got stained like day one. Very sad. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. What are you doing? So are you eating like I'm a hot rocking... dog next to it or what? You know I love those hot D. Was I it know... the banana yellow rubbing off on the? <laughs> Honestly, it is yellow and it looks not good. It's like pollen from an like uh, orchid. Oh or no! Well. Um, but now I'm rocking the RDS Industries uh, hard shell case, which is actually very cute and fun because it's like a mini version of the same one I have in my normal switch. So it's oh, like there's cool. one and then a little one. It's kind of fun. And I like the hard shell case ultimately because I get nervous about. I yeah, this is iPad, literally just like, break. Yeah, but that's was, cool too. There's, I was gonna say this yeah. is the equivalent of like wrapping your T-shirt around it <laughs> and just like throwing it in your bag. But it is sleek looking. It kind of completes yeah. the ideology of the thing. Oh yeah, the, I, the, the although I like match. the hard shell element because I get a little nervous. But the uh, what I was going to say as oh what I I hope we get the flip case and I also hope we get more specialized versions like more specific cosmetic ones oh, like for sure. an animal crossing one. Oh, you it would be fun to be see that. them do that with this model there's gonna like be a, a bunch of little leaves you're getting the pokemon one yeah. um and who knows what games they're going to announce uh yeah i hope next they do year, that it'll be a fun use of it as like mm-hmm. a fun like collector element too. yeah it's all it's also kind of sad fire Emblem was already out and that they yeah because like... i got so many 3ds's there were so many fire yeah. Emblem. yeah <laughs> yeah awesome and not awesome looking 3ds's that it would be uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of experimenting well, with that, especially because the Switch itself is more fixed, with the exception of the Joy-Con. Same with Zelda, uh, Breath, uh, uh, Link's, uh, Link's Awakening. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of surprised that didn't happen, but I know, true. Zelda, Legend, or Breath of the Wild 2 seems yeah. like it's perfectly slated for... For sure. A, a Chica Slate. Some type of cool, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. slated. It would be cool to see, yeah, like a cool, like maybe deep purple, like maybe like it looks like kind of Majora's Mask looking. It's got like some cool dust or smoke looking element to it because yeah. there's like kind of that mystery uh, evil lurking. I like, I like the idea of the, like the... With the a gold Triforce like Chica in there. technology Ooh. like blue lines yeah. kind of oh, all over cool it. Too. But yeah. I would like to see them play with that. Um, Matt, let's end this episode with one final thing. I want you to pitch to the potential viewer right. uh, what your argument for the light and I'll pitch the argument for the original. Who is it for? Okay. You know, what, describe the ideal customer, and that's where we'll end it. Sure. Uh, you haven't picked up a Switch yet. You're super uh, into Nintendo games. You can't wait for Pokemon to come out, um, but you've been wanting to play uh, Breath of the Wild and, I don't know, let's say Mario Odyssey, because your mm-hmm. significant other has the game cartridge, and you've played on their <laughs> Switch, but you just, you know, you want your own, dang it. Um, also, you are a student. And or um, small hands, yeah, individual with small hands. Uh, and I just you, you know, you're on a budget. The difference between them. But yeah, this, that's this is definitely the switch for you. Um, and and you know, you don't care about the, the TV or you play in handheld, anyways. Or, like you said, like you're kind of more of a modular person to begin with, you're playing mostly on your phone, anyways. Yeah, yeah, honestly, I would say the argument for the original is if you want to play on the TV then you know is that worth a hundred dollars but also 
and this is where I hope this dividing line falls apart. Do you intend to, is the battery life a big consideration? Because if it is, I think that's an argument. It's that it's so it's significant enough that yeah. I think it is a vote in favor. It's worth saying, do you want to play on the TV or is battery life really important to you? And if one of those two things are true, then you should spring the extra hundred bucks. And I, I, I really do think this is a, a big factor, but uh, both my brothers are much taller than me. Um, both of them have switches. My older brother even has the switch grip to like make the switch even mm. easier to hold. Yeah. Um, this is not going to be the switch for them uh, or taller people are going to find this device just a, too small for them. And then, I mean, you, you and I have already both talked about the fact that picking up the old switch feels like, oh, is this like some sort of switch pro? It's like so big and for sure. heavy um, after you've been playing with the light for a while. But I definitely don't think like if you've got larger hands, uh, or even bad eyes, which they both have. Sorry, Ben. Um, Sorry, the, <laughs> the, you're going to want to stick with that bigger screen and the, the bigger Joy-Con. Uh, but this is so cool for the rest of us, and I'm glad I have it. Agreed. Now, but we can agree, certainly, uh, I would, if you already own a Switch, I would say it is not a no. worthy second purchase. It certainly no. should not be viewed as an upgrade. No. No, it's this it is a, 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 a frivolous luxury that us, yeah. us Nintendo shills have, have, are, uh, are definitely proud <laughs> yeah. of owning yeah. and maybe not so I, proud of owning. I would not I would not recommend upgrading your switch to the switch Lite if you're going to trade one in. I would not do it like that. No. And no. I wouldn't buy it as a second console unless you just really want the fun toy aspect, in which yep. case we did it. And if but I would say if you have the original switch. And you play it enough handheld, I would recommend trading it in for the better battery one yeah yeah i agree i think if you're someone who plays handheld and you have an original switch it's worth the upgrade yeah yeah that's a good point um yeah otherwise you're super happy with yours you like you yeah, still like your it. color totally love it and yep i do like the yellow it's uh it's funny because it was such a big decision i feel like I when we we're talking about it like i heard we, you and i talked and I, I texted my mom and sister and i'm like guys i, I think i like the yellow like what it, you know is it right and my sister's like it, it brings you joy to it i'm like okay and now it's like at first, I'm like, oh, cool, it's yellow. Now I like, I never think of the color of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, same. Um, and, and I, I like it. it. I was gonna pops, ask you, the, is your sister down for this console? Is she gonna get one of them? You uh, think? Definitely. Or I just will, wait for an Animal Crossing skew. When Animal like Crossing happens, yeah. okay. de- certainly, certainly. Yeah. And again, uh, she she does not have a TV. She's living in DC now, and you know she uses tablets and things. I Switch Lite is perfect. Yeah. You know, she's not going to play on smash on the tv with four friends over no no this is great put it on our coffee table or a nightstand have some you know then she gets to play with you online yep. yeah no that's awesome um cool this has been a fun a fun chat we're gonna be playing a ton of uh games on our maybe on our lights ideally uh hopefully we will uh have some great conversation around us beating um the legend of zelda uh link's awakening and Hopefully, sometime soon, Bre- or Breath of the Wild, um, Fire Emblem, because that game's taking mm-hmm. forever. But it's so good, so good. and I'm enjoying yeah. it on my on my light. So. For sure. Okay, Matt, thank you so much for joining as well. And this has been another Nintendo podcast. <laughs>